are in the Fine Molds booth, and I'm standing here with Kunihiro Suzuki, the president of Fine Molds, and I need him with me here today because they have a brand new, beautiful 48 scale kit of an aircraft I know absolutely nothing about. And so we have to talk to the man himself here. So, Suzuki san, kore nan nan desu ka, kono shikoki? Kore wa sekai saishu no tendak teso shiki desu. U2 to ka, SR71 no gosenzo sama desu. Kore wa nihon ga saishu ni kai haki shimashita. Eh, so nan desu ka. Okay, so this is the world's first ever strategic reconnaissance aircraft. It's the Type 98 land-based reconnaissance plane Model 12. Uh, which was developed by the uh, Japanese Army and was also used by the Japanese Navy. And it's the, the first aircraft in the world that was designed specifically for the purpose of long-term reconnaissance. There are none of these aircraft left existing in the world. They only built about 50 of them in, in the first place. And almost nobody in Japan knows much about it either. But fine molds went. They found in the museum archives, they got a copy of the actual manual for the aircraft. And based on data and drawings that are in the manual of the aircraft, they've recreated the kit here. So there's going to be a lot of Japanese people and a lot of aviation fans learning about this aircraft for the first time because of this kit. So that sounds pretty exciting, actually. なんかこの長いなんか流線系の香りみたいなのがあるんですけど。当時、飛行機が発端ですけど、飛行機が発端ですけど、できるだけ速度を狙って、あの、固定着のままでも速く、つまり軽量化することによって、当時飛行機が発
this looks pretty cool. If if building a street car is not your thing, if you'd rather have a racing car, then Hasegawa's got you covered with two different options for the classic R31. Hey, fans of construction modeling, Hasegawa's been coming out with some really cool construction kits lately, and they have some new stuff as well. I actually could not tell you what exactly these are, but we have a power shovel, and we've got a nice little, uh, what do you call it, a, a rolling, a roller machine. Yeah, it says roller there in Katakana. So that's pretty cool. It says these parts for the for the shovel, at least, are going to become molded in orange. If there's anybody out there that really wants to build it without actually having to paint it, hey, at least it will still be orange after you build it. So that's kind of interesting. A lot of great detail on this. So, yeah, gosh, if you're a big fan of modeling construction stuff, then this looks pretty cool. Another new tool car kit coming from Hasegawa. This time we have a classic, I believe this was a 1970s car, the Mitsubishi Colt Gallant GTO MR. Now you'll notice this car, if you look at this car, you think, wow, that really kind of looks like an American muscle car. Now if my memory serves me right, Mitsubishi, when they originally wanted to design this car, they had hired a designer, or they had sent a designer, to go to the California Art Institute, where a lot of famous car designers still go this day to help design this car. And so that designer came back from the California Art Institute and he took a lot of influences from the Mustangs and the Camaros and the classic muscle cars and helped design this car. And that is the reason why the Mitsubishi GTO looks the way it does. Although unlike an American muscle car, this thing did not pack a large V8 engine. This had a four cylinder engine. It was in, in line, it was dual overhead cam though. One, 1600 cc so but it was still real rear wheel drive at least and it was maybe not the most powerful car but it had great looks and it's just classic japanese sports car hi everybody we're in the aoshima booth and we're taking a look at their the snap kit series and uh, a lot of these products are already on sale and uh, you know i've spent the last uh, 25 years or something selling hobby products so Sometimes I look at things from the perspective of do I want to build it or am I interested in it? And sometimes I can look at things as a businessman. And to put my businessman hat on here for a brief moment, I, I really got to hand it to Aoshima because you know the, the whole hobby industry has a problem right now trying to get new people into the industry and to build it. And they came up with the idea here that if they made a series of kits based on incredibly popular cars that are selling really well, perhaps they could get some of the people who actually own these cars to maybe build a simple kit of their own vehicle. So of course we have the Hustler, which we covered before on Hobbylink TV. The Prius, which is you know seen everywhere around the world, uh, almost accused of being more of an appliance than a car. There are so many of these things. Uh, the Toyota 86, also super popular uh, here in Japan and in other countries too. And uh, they've announced the, the latest things they have coming up here. Uh, we have the, the Toyota Wellfire, might be called something else overseas, but a very common van. And then they completely broke the mold with this whole series of kits and they've, they've announced that they're going to do a version in their simple snap kit of the Toyota 2000 GT, which is not something that a lot of people own at all. Um, very uh, car savvy people will probably recognize the Toyota 2000 GT uh, as being the Bond car from You Only Live Twice, which was of course shot here in Japan. So there's very few of these on the road. They'll go for a million bucks if you can come up with one these days, but they're going to do this vehicle in, in the same series as well. So it'll be interesting to see where Aoshima takes this. Uh, just to go back over again, it, their snap assembly, they have stickers for easy finishing, and as you can see, not a lot of parts, so it's uh, maybe just a quick afternoon of work. So if you're not a heavy-duty modeler and you want to build a kit of, of something that you might own or have a bit of an affection for but don't want to spend, you know, months of your life doing, Aoshima Snap Kit Series is a place to look. We're still in the Aoshima booth and we thought we'd take a moment to show off the B-Max products. Now B-Max is obviously not Aoshima, it's B-Max. But uh, Aoshima handles the B-Max distribution here in Japan. Uh, and their, car, their kits are so cool, we just thought we'd, we'd show them off real quick here. Of course, they've got a great series already of, of uh, these classic race cars, but they have three major new releases that we're seeing here for the first time. Audi Quattro S1 E2, uh, Lancia Delta S4, 
and the Porsche 935. Oh, the Porsche, yeah. So beautiful of a car, but you know, they're showing it off really well here. Take a look at the detail, and this is typical of their earlier releases too, but on the Lancia here, all of the, the racing frame and suspension and supports and everything, it's all in there. Uh, and this is going to be a real joy to build for anybody who's into these uh, classic 70s and 80s racers. Uh, B-Max, uh, built out of Macau, part of the great uh, Chinese empire. And uh, we hope to see these guys get more world distribution going forward because they've really got some great product. So here we have, this is a new one also on the way from Aoshima, the HMS Dostoshir. I believe that's how you pronounce it if I am correct. So they haven't, they did a sister ship of the ship before, but I believe this is the first time they had this one in this scale, if that's what my memory is anyway. So this ship, Aoshima has been doing a lot of uh, like foreign ships if that ship happened to have been sunk by the Japanese. So this is another ship that was sunk by the Japanese somewhere in the Pacific. I don't remember where, so if it was the Indian Ocean or whatnot, but they, they really love making ship kits of ships that were sunk by the Japanese, which is really kind of amusing to me. But I mean, even if it was sunk by the Japanese, it's still great to finally get this ship in this scale as a new toolkit from Aoshima, because it's going to have some great detail. And you got a, nice, not a lot of nice, uh, actually these are Japanese aircraft, because they've kind of got like it posed up there as it's being attacked by the Japanese aircraft before it was sunk. So something interesting, something new on the way from Aoshima. And this is going to be due out in July. Here we are at the Asuka booth, uh, where they get a, a very interesting new product, the 135th scale. It's a, it's a variation of the Japanese Self-Defense Force Type 74 tank, which is one of my favorite tanks. It is a really, a really cool tank, and if you're a Godzilla fan, you've seen them go up against uh, the Big G many, many times. Now, what's different about this kit is, uh, well, what it is, it's the, the 135th scale Tamiya Type 74 kit, which has been around a long time, but it's an excellent, excellent kit with fantastic detail. Uh, but ta ta uh, Asuka, has made a special version of the G version, Type 74 Tank G. Now what this was, was a test to upgrade uh, the Type 74. And when did they do this? In uh, 1993, actually. Uh, they were going to add some parts, uh, upgrade it, and try to extend the life of it for a while. Uh, nothing ever became of that, and they only ended up making five tanks, of which I just found out four are still on display at uh, various museums around Japan. Um, uh, so it was an interesting uh, attempt at uh, keeping, a, uh, I guess this is a first generation, second generation tank, um, main battle tank. Uh, and they're still using them. I mean, not this version, but the, the Type 74 is still in service in Japan. Uh, so what we have here again, it's the Tamiya base kit. And uh, this set over here, if you want to pull in, is uh, brand new parts from Asuka. Uh, what was different about this tank from the regular tank is it had side skirts. Uh, and lots of various other uh, detail parts on there. Uh, and for the real vehicle itself, I think there were different electronics packages and things like that in there. Uh, but for the model, the main things that will look different is the side skirts, obviously, and some of the details around there, the light guards, things like that. Uh, Tosca has also provided the rubber chevron type tracks. Uh, the Tamiya kit, I believe, came with the metal chevron types. Uh, I don't remember the exact name uh, of those uh, tracks, but uh, yeah, very nice, gluable rubber chevron type tracks there. Uh, got the different decals uh, for the test vehicles. And so this is a very interesting kit. And where are the price? Oh, it's going to be for 5,700 yen. And this is coming out at the end of this month. So you can uh, probably be ordering. This is, this is up on HLJ right now, right? Get your pre-orders in at HLJ if, uh, if it's not up already. Uh, so fans of Japanese armor, Godzilla movies, and uh, attempts to keep old tanks running for a long time. This is an excellent, excellent kit from the fine folks at Asuka. Sorry, I had to kind of wipe, uh, wipe my drool there uh, because Tamiya, in a completely predictable but nonetheless incredibly uh, happy release, has announced they're doing the F-14D version of the Tomcat in 48 scale. Of course, we already have the, the beautiful F-14A from Tamiya, and they're showing off all of the changes they've made to the kit here to make it into the D, the changes to the vertical stabilizers, changes to the aircraft's nose. Of course, the biggest change from the A to the D was the engines, and all of this has been replicated in the different nozzles and uh, fan parts. Uh, the F-14D had different ejection seats, so this has been modeled, plus other changes to the inside of the cockpit as well. And of course, as the role of the F-14 evolved over its service life, one of the biggest changes was to the armament that the uh, plane often carried, and this has been reflected in the, in the parts that are included in the kit as well. Uh, we don't know a full uh, release date or price information yet. The sign just says summer. 
so sometime in the summer, uh, hopefully this kit's going to be out. We wish we could tell you more. But what we do know from looking at all of the parts and the great decals here is this is going to be an absolute must for any fan of naval aircraft. Tommy Booth, Armor, we've got 148th and 135th scale kits here. Let's start over here on the left with, uh, this one's been announced for a little while, 148th scale Churchill Mark 7, the Crocodile, that's the flame-throwing daddy, you got all the, the, the flame-throwing fuel back there, a very nice figure here set up in there. Uh, this is obviously an all-new tooling. Tell me, it continues with their great 148 scale kits. Uh, you got parts down here. If you want to look down here, this is the parts breakdown, Lincoln length tracks. Oh, this is nice. All the road wheels, of which there are many, um, not exactly molded in one piece, but you got the left and right halves there. So that'll make assembly easy. Uh, all the good Tell me, I fit. Now, here's a nice one. This is a 148 um, M4A3E8, the Easy 8 tank here. Oh, I got a little guy here. I'll pick up here in my massive paw, makes it look even smaller. It's actually a pretty nice size. Uh, it's got the EZ-8 suspension. Um, this is a World War II version. You can tell it's got the, the World War II style tracks on there instead of the, the Chevron type that you see on the later Korean War ones and later. Uh, but yeah, the, the Tamiya doesn't skimp on the detail, the detail at all in 48 scale, as you probably all know. But this is a great addition to their 148 scale lineup. Again, Lincoln length tracks, parts breakdown, very nice. I think it comes with the, the um, commander figure hunched down in the in the cupola there ready to do business so some good allied tanks there now let's move up a scale and move over to Germany uh, we've got the, the Vespe self-propelled howitzer an Italian front this includes the, the uh, does does it include the figures yet? Uh, yes it includes the figures and some uh, other parts to make it uh, an Italian front version I would suppose as you can see there and these are all, by the way, these are all coming out. Uh, the Churchill's coming out in May. The Sherman is coming out in July, that would be. Uh, Vespa is also coming out in May, in just a couple of days, actually. Uh, and here's another one. This is coming out in summer. This is in 48 scale, the Kettenkrad set uh, with the winter crew and a little guard, guard, what do you call that? The guard post dude-ish guy with his little house there to make sure everyone has their papers in order, uh, which is good. And moving on to some more 135th scale stuff, all new tooling uh, of the, the M3 Stewart light tank. And this is late production one here we got going on there. And up oh, here's another one that I can hold in my hand there. Now it's got um, uh, the belt style tracks, which for a, a tank like this that doesn't have any sag to the tracks, and it's pretty tight live tracks, I think they're called, uh, this is, the, the belt style tracks are just fine. Got a cool commander figure sitting in there. Again, this is an all new tooling of the late version of the M3 Stewart. Uh, this is coming out in uh, June, June 23rd to be exact. Only 3,000 yen. So that is a very nice kit. And you can see down here, we've got the breakdown of the parts, uh, the belt style tracks, decals, everything nice. The lower hull is uh, box construction. So you get all the, de uh, the good detail on all the different sides. Uh, I got some nice built ups up here. Russian version, apparently, is part of the package. Oh, there. And some all kinds of good stuff. So, some 48th and 35th armor uh, from Tamiya. All right, now here's the big news for armor fans at the Tamiya booth here. Uh, this is a 135th scale Type 16 maneuver combat vehicle. Uh, called the Type 16 because it was introduced or accepted into the uh, the uh, Japan Self-Defense Force in 2016. Now, as you can see, it's a uh, similar design to like, what is it, the Centauro, the Italian Centauro or the, uh, the US Striker uh, gun system thing. It's got the 105 millimeter gun in the turret, uh, eight wheels. Um, and again, this is a brand new vehicle uh, that the, the Japan Self-Defense Forces are implementing. And this is the first kit of it in this scale from Tommy, of course. Now, this is the production version uh, the turret's a little bit different. Some of the details in the front are a little bit different. Uh, I think there was a 172nd kit from somebody else that was the prototype version, but this is the actual, this is the real deal that's going to be used uh, by the uh, self-defense force. Now, some of the cool things about this kit, obviously the detail is fantastic, but you get the front wheels, all four-wheel drive, four, not four-wheel drive, four, it's eight-wheel drive, but four-wheel steering on the front there, which is kind of a cool gimmick that you have there. Uh, superb detail on all the, the under-chassis stuff there. Uh, two figures, the commander, I guess, and uh, I would imagine that's the gunner or the loader or one of those guys in there. And this is a, this is a big, beefy kit. You know, again, I'm a massive mountain of a man, so it might look small, but uh, 
Oh, this is this is a good uh, handful of plastic there. Ah, konnichiwa. Ah, so you just get it more. Yoroshiku no yashimasu. Dajibu desu. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So personally, I've been really looking forward to, uh, for Tamiya uh, to, to finally get this out. And so I'm very happy that this kit is out there. And as you can see here, we got a breakdown of the parts, the sprues laid out here. Chassis parts, it's got uh, vinyl tires. Vinyl, uh, gomu? Gomu kana. Rubber, rubber tires, not particularly vinyl. Turret breakdown there. Uh, we got some built up models here with a Type 74 for reference in the back there. Tommy has Type 74 tank, uh, which has been out for, for decades, but it's still a fantastic kit. Uh, and some other built-ups. And uh, these have also been out for a while, but just to go with this baby, we got the, the Type uh, 10 tank and the, the old Type 90 tank here, which are also excellent, excellent kits from Tommy. So yeah, Armor fans uh, would be very happy about this new, the Type 16 maneuver combat vehicle in 135th scale from Tommy, and that's coming this summer. All right, we have a new ship kit on the way from Tamiya as well. Now, one thing that's really, really interesting for me about this ship kit is that it's actually not based on any real ship at all. This is from a Japanese manga series called Aircraft Carrier Ibuki. And as you can see here, this is a modern, not a World War II style aircraft carrier, but this is actually based off of the Izumo class, which is the 22DH was the code name for it, I believe. But one thing that is different about this Ibuki than the Izumo is you'll note here that it has a ski jump on the front. Now the ski jump is needed for vertical takeoff and landing flight operations. So you'll also note the aircraft that are equipped on this aircraft carrier, they are F-35Bs, which Japan recently, I do believe, signed a contract for that they are going to go ahead and purchase F-35Bs. So when you're going to have F-35B or V-2OL flight takeoff uh, abilities from aircraft carriers, that's, that ski jump will allow you to take off from the carrier while you, the aircraft is carrying more weapons on a heavier payload than if it was to do just a straight up vertical takeoff. So that is one interesting thing about this aircraft or this aircraft carrier. Now this is, of course, like, as I mentioned earlier, this is not something that Japan is actually making. This is only fictional from a manga series, but since it is based off of the Izumo, I don't see there's no reason that Japan actually can't go ahead and modify one of the aircraft carriers to add the ski jump onto it. So. One other thing, interesting thing to note about this actually is the, the aircraft, the deck of it is completely flat. So I, I do wonder if you really, really wanted, you could go ahead and build just a flat top version of this as well. And this is going to be out at the end of this month in May, it says on 526. So look forward to coming, look forward to this coming out at the end of the month. Okay guys, we are out, that's it wrapping up at uh, Shizuoka Hobby Show 2018. I hope you enjoyed it and uh, well we'll bring you many more videos on uh, hobbylink.tv. Thank you very much. See ya.